time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Well, let's try this again, shall we? Today, I want to talk to you about Psalms 91, and it's been a life changer for me. I watched Dr. Bally the other day talk about it, and God has been dealing with me about a whole lot of different things. Let me just read the version that I have. It says that, that those who live in the shadow or the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I will declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. He is my safe place. He is my God, and I trust in him. For he will rescue me from every trap of the enemy. He will protect me from the deadly, deadly pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers. He will shelter me under his wings like a shield. His faithful promises are our armor and our protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the nighttime, the nightmares that you may ha be having, and do not be afraid of the arrows that fly at noonday. Those would be the devil's accusation, the fear and the slander and everything that's going on. Don't be fearful of all this propaganda. Yes, it's real, but don't be fearful of it. It says, do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes like a snake in midday, because a thousand shall fall at your right side and 10,000 shall fall at, down at your all around you. This is a total different translation I'm used to reading, but I like what it says. It says, these evils will not touch you. Open your eyes and see how the wicked perish. If you make, here's the promises of this. If you make, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will come near your home, for God will order his angels concerning you, and they will protect you wherever you go. They will protect you with their hands. Now, as I was thinking about this, and, and I just want you to understand that in Psalms 91, it says that he that dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to think of this. Dwell in Hebrew is a verb, which means a quarter. He that, that lives in a quarter of the house, that that rest to reside or to inhabit he that sits or remains or lives in that secret place of god think about this as a resident of the house as you live there in prayer as you as you make god your refuge as you make god your lord and your king he will hide you in the secret place and in the, what, what the secret place means is this it means to hide you from your enemies any enemy that would be attacking you and the Most High means El Elam, which is God Most High, the timeless King who saves and redeems. There's no one higher than our God. He's a timeless God. There's no beginning. There's no end. And when you seek Him, He watches over you. He protects you under the shadow of His wing. Now watch what shadow means. I love this. Because shadow is this. In the midst of darkness... And in the midst of the dark clouds that sur surround you, I want you to think about this. He conceals you under his wings. It's, it's an ascended place. You have to ascend up. Go to your secret place. Shut the door. Lock yourself in there and get along with God and sin. And, and he will lift you up. The Bible says that he'll lift you up. And here's what lifted up means. It means above the madness of this fallen world. So as you sit there in your prayer closet and you begin to seek God, God will lift you up. The Hebrew word for dwell also means this, to lodge or to sleep, connecting it with death and resurrection. So think about it. By dwelling in the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, God will shield you with his presence and make evil powerless against you. Think about it. Therefore, the Almighty is our God. He's called Shaddai, 
which means our sustainer, our provider, our refuge, and our home. So the shadow of the Most High Shaddai is like a powerful eagle watching over his, his chicks. His eyes are keen and his wings are powerful. So he broods over us, he, he, waiting to rescue us from anything that comes our way. So Shaddai covers you with wings of protection and he can come in swift flight at any time to rescue you if we belong to him. With his hands, he grabs us up and he takes us under his wings, puts us in his bosoms in a protective state. The Lord will save you from the ensnaring traps that the enemy has put around you or from the devastation and the pestilence. These are promises that are just in God's word that we need to learn that we're in the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. So we do not have to fear what they fear. We, all we have to do is trust and believe in the Word of God. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's our provider. He's our sustainer. He protects us, and He gave us He gave us the keys to the kingdom. He gave us all them promises, and the Bible says that every promise in God is yes and amen. Yes and amen. God, do you love me? Yes. Amen. God, do you want to heal me? Yes. Amen. God, do you want me to be sick? No, I don't want you to be sick. No, I'm not giving you a sickness to teach you a lesson. The sickness comes upon the wicked, comes upon a disobedience, but it is sent from the enemy. God does not inflict pain on his people to teach them anything. God wants you to come up hither. He wants you to come up to higher ground. Jesus said, go into your closet, shut the door, pray to your heavenly father that is in secret, and he will reward you openly now think about this it says this that when god says go into the door there's how you get into the secret place the secret place is the door of prayer and when you enter that door that leads you to the divine presence of god you go through the door you shut it behind you just like we're building a door right here and it's just a header a doorway a frame to protect that door to hold that door so nothing can come in and out or it'll be level so when we go into our closet, we open that door, we shut it, and we get down on our hands and knees. And you know what that does? It removes us from the distraction that's going on all around us. It, it, it gets us alone with God. It takes us into the divine presence of God where there is no warfare. No warfare at all, just rest. Think about that. The door of prayer through Jesus, because Jesus says, I am the door. I am the door. Enter this secret place. Friends, you've got to spend time with the Lord. We're on lockdown right now. They're telling us we can't have more than five people, ten people, or however many people around us. But I want you to understand something. We've got to be six feet apart. Six feet apart. But we live in a society that is looking for the government and knowledge and wisdom for help. And the only thing that's going to help you is the word of the Lord. It endureth forever. God said, fear not. He said, don't fear. Don't fear about the terror that flies at days and the pestilence. God said, you don't have to worry about that because God overcame it. He sent his son to die for us. So we have no reason to fear. We have no reason to shut our doors and lock it. Yes, wash your hands, be clean, that's good hygiene. Practice everything that they want us to practice, but do not practice the false worship and thinking that somebody is gonna get you out of this mess. Only God can get you out of this mess. He'll protect you. Go into the kingdom in the secret place. Look what Matthew 13, 11 says this. It says, the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, talking to believers, but it has not been given to the world or unbelievers. They don't understand a thing we say. When we say plead the blood, they're like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. And I want to tell you something. When we plead the blood, we're pleading the most powerful life-giving force in the universe. This blood redeemed mankind from sin this blood heals us redeems us brings us close to god this blood of jesus christ it washes us clean it it transforms us into another kingdom so in the psalms it's telling us don't fear what they fear don't fear this pestilence this pestilence it could be dried up think about that woman with the issue of blood when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, you know what happened? Jesus got sick. 
because she was infected. So she infected Jesus with that sickness. Now, the Bible says that when that woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment, that healing virtue flew out of him. It flowed out of him. It made him stop. He felt a withdrawal. This woman was healed instantly because nothing, listen, nothing evil or dead or sickness can touch God and stay sick, stay dead, or stay evil. If God touches it, it's cleansed. He'll cleanse it. He heals it. He redeems it. I want you to understand something. We serve a powerful God. He's not dead. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know what you've been going through, but I know what we're all going through. And I don't want to fear. I have nothing to fear. And you can't threaten me with heaven, as Mike Overstreet would always say. So if I die, I die. I go to heaven. You can't threaten me with streets of gold. So it's a promotion, but we don't have to fear the pestilence. What we got to do is speak against it. Plead the blood of Christ against it. Tell God, say, Lord, I'm fearful, and come down and pick me up. But you got to draw near to him, and he draws near to you. And you got to believe God's report and not the world's report, because the world's report is, is filling you with fear, it's injecting you with disbelief and doubt. It's injecting us with such a fear that's immobilizing the body of Christ. But you know what? We have social media. You can't lock the word of God down. You put Paul in prison, what would Paul do? He wrote two-thirds of the epistles. You tell us we got to separate socially and be six feet apart? That's fine with me. I can still say, I love you, brother. Jesus loves you, brother. God's still the same. He hasn't changed. So I'm going to rest under the shadow of the Almighty because he's going to protect me. And I want to close with this right here. In Isaiah 26, 20, it says this. The Lord says, come, my people. Come, my people, and enter your chambers and shut the door behind you. Enter your chambers. Why? What is he, why didn't he say enter my chambers? Because, see, God lives in heaven. And the kingdom of God is on the inside of us. And Jesus told us to enter our secret place. He said, that's where you go. Get alone and pray. Enter your chambers, the chamber room of prayer, and shut all the madness off, shut all the confusion off, and, and stop watching the news 24-7 like that's your God. It's not your God. Our God is Jesus Christ. He's our God. Get in the Word of God and figure out what God has to say, and He's going to tell you something. You know what He's going to say? He's going to say, don't fear. Don't fear the pestilence. Don't fear this, even though we're living in the last days and all of these things are going to come to pass. The Bible says that in the last days that evil people will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. It said there'll be wars and rumors of wars. It said that there'll be pestilence, disease, earthquakes in various places. He said all these things, kingdom against kingdom and nation against nation. He said, don't worry, that's the beginning of the end. He said, and as a woman is given birth, in her last trimester, these things will become more frequent. They will happen more often. We're seeing them now like crazy. Storms after storms after storms, earthquakes. Everything's going on. This world is falling to pieces. And, and the, this world is groaning for the sons and daughters of God to manifest themselves and rise up and not be afraid. The Bible says that, that we believe God and the righteous, when we shrink back, he's not pleased with us. Then we're destroyed. But when the righteous rise up and move forth in faith, I want to tell you something. There's power there. Because, because listen, perfect love dries out all fear. Jesus took our punishment. The disease is not for believers. It's, it's, not, for, it's, not, it's not for people to teach them a lesson. It's people who have made their own ways. We're living in a world today where we're calling good evil and evil good. And after this pandemic goes on and it fades away, there's going to be another one coming. You know what? We're going to lose more freedom and more freedom and more freedom. And, and, and we're going to what? Watch this. What's going to happen? A one world order is going to come into play. And you're going to see it come right before our eyes. I mean, don't touch the money. The money's nasty. It's, inf it's infected and all that. It's all being played out. Look how well the world is listening to the leaders of this world and each community. And we are to obey the laws of the land and we respect and honor our police officers, our governors, and our presidents. We're to show all that. But I see another hand at work in all this. And it's, it's the hand of God and it's the hand of the enemy. The enemy knows his time is short. 
So he is down on this earth, and he's full of fury. He's mad. He's ticked off, and he hates God's people. So he wants us to be on lockdown, and he wants us to fear. We don't have anything to fear, because if God be for us, who can be against us? There's nobody can be against us. Oh, sure, there's weapons formed against us. You know, things happen. Things come and go. But I want you to know one thing today is he that makes the most high their dwelling place. He who dwells in the shadow of the Almighty, he who dwells there will find peace, will find rest. Well, God will shield you. God will protect you. And what I love about this psalm is if you read the whole psalm, it's so fabulous because God's given us a double whammy, if you will. Not only is he saying that he'll protect us under his wings, he's saying that he gives his angels charge over us charge over us to protect us by the powerful hands that they have the angels of light that are still on god's good side not the the angel of darkness not the the angels of deception but the angels of truth the angels of truth don't fear call on jesus pray that's the only thing that's going to stop this thing from spreading and kill it and i want to tell you something yes god can give man wisdom and knowledge to, to make a vaccine. How do you think we got all of the vaccines that we have today? Man just come up with an idea, right? Right. They got a revelation from God. God gave them truth that was hidden in plain sight, but they couldn't see it until God unveiled it to humans, and then man made the, the cure. But God is the one that cures the body. The Bible says that he quickens our spirit. And God is a sustainer of all life. I want you today to enjoy this day. I want you to read the Psalms 91. I want you to get it in your heart. I want you to know that you're in a new covenant with Jesus Christ, a blood covenant. A blood covenant that has secure promises. Secure promises. Listen, God sent Jesus into this world to save this world. Not, not listen, not to judge it, but to save it. God is the judge. Jesus said this, I don't judge anything. I gave all the judgment to my Father, but I came down to save it, to save the world. And he died on that cross, and he died for us. And when they were tormenting him, and they were taunting him, and they were beating him, and they were whipping him, and blood was running down his brow because they put a crown of thorns on his head. And they said, if you are the Son of God, then prophesy to us and tell us which one's hitting you, and, and this and that. And then one of the guys on the cross he said, listen, if you're the son of God, then get down off this cross and save us and save yourself. See, the guys, people of the world, they don't understand that a sacrifice had to be made. You know what? Jesus honored what that guy said. That prayer was answered by Jesus saying it is finished and dying. He didn't have to come down off that cross alive. He came down off that cross dead, and then he came alive out of a tomb. Therefore, he rescued all man from death. He saved himself, and he saved humanity through that one sacrifice of blood of Jesus Christ. Once and for all. So if the Old Testament in the Psalms 91 brings all those promises, how many more promises do we have in the New Testament? We have so many more. I mean, I could go on and on and on, and I'm well known for a preacher that just keeps waving and keeps preaching on and on. And if I say I'm closing, that means it's 45 minutes later, and then I'm really closing. But I got to get to work because uh, I see my boss on here, and he waved at me, and, and there's no get back to work sign. And so I want to obey him and uh, be a, a good soldier. But enter the door. Look, there's the door. That's a door frame. You got to build it. You got to build your prayer closet. You got to make a memorial. You got to get in there yourself and you got to shut distractions off. Everything that comes against you and stay until you feel the presence of Jesus cuz then that's him shielding you. That's him wrapping his wings around you, his arms around you. And when you feel the old timers say pray through. I love that. Pray through. Us young kids, pray through what? Pray until you touch heaven. When you know, when you're in your prayer closet and your prayer closet feels more like heaven than this earth, brothers and sisters, that's when you touched God and God touched you. Because that anointing destroys yoke. The anointing that God has, it destroys yoke. So when you get anointed, I want to tell you something, that anointing of God destroys sickness, bondage, despair, doubt, 
it, 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 it quickens his body. That anointing is real. It's not counterfeit. And it's given to every single believer who wants it. Every believer that calls out on the name of Jesus gets that anointing from God. Our sins are washed away. We're redeemed from death, hell, and the grave. And then our name's written in the Lamb's book of life with Jesus' blood. And that anointing, that anointing is what destroys your yoke. Get anointed today. Don't, don't stop praying until you feel him, praise God. And preach to yourself. Go to the mirror. Get your Bible and preach to yourself until you feel heaven come down. I want to tell you it works. You can give me a microphone, and if I'm depressed, I'll be undepressed. I, if I'm not feeling good, I'll start feeling good. Why? Because the anointing. And the Word of God is anointed. So I can't just preach anything and it be anointed. i got to preach the Word. The words are truth. Job said, I decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. Praise be to God. Well, today, remember, no pestilence shall come near your dwelling place. When I think back of the Egypt, of, of Egypt, think about this. When God told Moses, slaughter a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost of the right side of the left side and on the door top. He said, and then when a death angel comes by at midnight, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, that death angel will pass over your house. It will not touch your house. And that's just what they did. They obeyed a simple thing like slaughter a lamb, put that blood on the doorpost, because he said that's the sign. That's the sign right there. If there was no blood applied, the death angel would have went in. And the Bible said there was no cry louder ever in all of Egypt than that night when God went in, sent the death angel, and it took all the firstborn male children out of Egypt in one night, in one second. When people woke up, they found their firstborn dead, but not the children of Israel. And you, and Listen, God always makes a distinction between them that are his and them that are not his. There's a church out there today that says they're a church. They don't act like the church. And I ain't talking about the superficial things like drinking, smoking, cussing, and all that. It goes deeper than that. God will clean that stuff up little by little. It's a heart. It's, an, it's the attitude. I call it the beatitude of the heart. It's the attitude of having a Christ-like nature in your heart. That's what's important. It's not that you can say in the name of Jesus or just plead the blood and then go and act however you want to act. And, and not forgive whoever you don't want to forgive and be mean and nasty and a backbiter, a slander, and a hater, that ain't, that's not going to help nothing. That's, that doesn't, that don't, Jesus said you should know them by their fruits. The fruits, the fruit of Jesus, the loving kindness. You know, that's what the house of God is called in Hebrew, the house of loving kindness. How the church has missed it. We need to be full of this love and kindness. Because God is. Because here's what God did. He said, listen, I want to make a distinction between them are mine and them that are not mine. No plague touched the children of Israel, but it touched all of Egypt. When the Nile turned to blood and the basins that were full of water turned to blood, the children of Israel in their house still had basins of water. That's supernatural, my friend. Their livestock wasn't harmed. Think about it. They were in Dothan living. And God protected them. Because God said, I can cause the rain to fall 10 feet from you and make your land barren. That's how awesome our God is. So I want you to understand, God is watching you. He's watching you. He's protecting you. So do not fear, for the Lord thy God is with you. He's your strength. He's your refuge. He's your high tower. He is your portion. He's your father. He's your husband. He's your wife. He's everything you need him to be. He's your employer. He's your boss. So whatever you need, go to Jesus. You need him. And remember, the Lord is your refuge. Well, I'm signing off. I got to go, and I hope that you like this today. But I want you to read Psalms 91. That's your homework. Read it. Find all the promises of God. All right? Find them, live in them, and love them. Shalom, peace, and, and I'm out. time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord. And sweet is
Just the way he gently takes me by the hand And helps me down the road that leads to home 